Okay, good morning everyone. So today, I'm going to talk to you about these three entity that sometimes can confuse me before and I hope I can make this clearer to you. We're going to talk about pericardial tamponade compared to effusive constrictive pericarditis and compared to constrictive pericarditis. Now, I hope from the previous video, I've already told you what is constrictive pericarditis. Basically, there are two main criteria of constrictive pericarditis. There is dissociated intrathoracic and intracardiac pressure and there is also increased interventricular dependence because of that stiff pericardium. So if you do echocardiogram in patients with constrictive pericarditis, you can see septal shift on expiration, the septal go to the right side and inspiration, the septal go to the left side. You can see diastolic septal bounce at every bit. You can see annulus paradoxes. This is someone that has symptoms of heart failure. However, the tissue velocity, which is E prime, rather than being low, it is actually high. Number four is annulus reverses, in which the septal velocity is higher than the lateral velocity. And lastly, this exaggerated early expiratory diastolic flow reversal. So this is a normal hepatic vein flow. So this is systole here. This is diastole and that is diastolic reversal. However, in patients with constrictive pericarditis, you can see systole here, diastole here, and there is an exaggerated diastolic reversal during expiration. Okay, so there is five criteria of constrictive pericarditis in echocardiogram. Now, what is pericardial tamponade? This is something that we are used to. When we see someone with pericardial effusion and echocardiogram, the patient have elevated jugular venous pressure, patient have pulses paradoxes, hypotension and tachycardia. So the patient is hemodynamic, hemodynamically not stable. Why does the patient have elevated JVP? Because of increase in right atrial pressure. So that is pericardial tamponade and we are very used to it. However, there is this entity that is quite confusing. It is called effusive constrictive pericarditis. What is effusive constrictive pericarditis? Basically, it presents the same way as pericardial tamponade. So if you see the patient, the patient will have pericardial effusion, elevated JVP, and all these clinical criteria. So from clinical, you can't really differentiate. However, the difference between effusive constrictive pericarditis and cardiac tamponade is this. After pericardiosynthesis, the JVP keep elevated in patient with effusive constrictive pericarditis and the patient will then show echocardiographic criteria of constrictive pericarditis. I repeat one more time. In pericardial tamponade, once you tap the patient, the JVP will normalize and the echo will normalize. In patient with effusive constrictive pericarditis, after you do pericardial synthesis, the JVP will still be raised and the echocardiographic criteria now will show the criteria of constrictive pericarditis. Now the question is, if you see the patient before pericardial synthesis and you do an echocardiogram in this patient, is there echo criteria that can differentiate effusive constrictive pericarditis and cardiac tamponade? So we will see the difference between echo of someone with tamponade versus effusive constrictive pericarditis versus constrictive pericarditis. And basically, I just wanted you to remember the three main difference. Alright? So, before you do pericardial synthesis in patients with pericardial tamponade and effusive constrictive pericarditis, how do you want to differentiate? So, there is three main way. Number one, you look at the E-prime, which is the tissue velocity. And you can see in constrictive pericarditis, the tissue velocity is high, otherwise known as annulus paradoxus. And this also happened in patients with effusive constrictive pericarditis before pericardial tapping. However, in pericardial tamponade, the E prime is actually low. That is number one. Number two, if you look at the mitral inflow and you look at the E over A ratio, you can see that in patients with constrictive pericarditis, the E is much higher than A. 
in patient with effusive constrictive pericarditis before tapping, the E also higher than A. However, in patient with pericardial tamponade, the E will be lower than A. And lastly, is the hepatic vein shape. Look at this. In patient with pericardial tamponade, you have systolic component, but you don't have diastolic forward flow. And then you have diastolic reversal without diastolic forward flow. In patient with effusive constrictive pericarditis, you have systolic flow and you have diastolic flow, but it is small. And you also have that diastolic reversal. You can see the difference. In effusive constrictive pericarditis, you have this diastolic forward flow, but you don't have that in pericardial tamponade. In constrictive pericarditis, it is much more pronounced, the systolic and diastolic forward flow. So, let me reiterate one more time. Before pericardial synthesis, how to differentiate whether the patient have pure pericardial tamponade or effusive constrictive pericarditis. Look at this. The E prime in pericardial tamponade is lower. This is higher. The E over A in pericardial tamponade is lower. The E over A in effusive constrictive pericarditis is higher. In pericardial tamponade, there is no diastolic forward flow. In effusive constrictive pericarditis, there is diastolic forward flow, but it is quite small. So that is the three things that I wanted you to remember. What about septal shape? This is actually not very reliable. Even though this present in most of the patients with constrictive pericarditis, the absence of septal shift cannot rule out if you see constrictive pericarditis and also pericardial tamponade. When you look at jugular venous pressure, what do you see? In patients with pericardial tamponade, you can see rapid X descent and blunted Y descent. Patients with effusive constrictive pericarditis have rapid X and Y descent and this is the same as constrictive pericarditis. Now, this is effusive constrictive pericarditis before pericardial tapping. After pericardial tapping, you can see that a patient with effusive constrictive pericarditis will show typical features of constrictive pericarditis. Very high E prime, prominent S and D and exaggerated reversal, high E and low A. So I hope from this talk, I have shown you how to differentiate pericardial tamponade versus if you see constrictive pericarditis before pericardial tapping and also constrictive pericarditis. Thank you very much for your attention.